Uh, all right, let's see if this works. All right, I think we good. I think so. Ooh, we ain't did this in a minute. Let me see. Let me make sure everything's okay. Okay, I think so. I think everybody can see. Okay, cool. Come on in. Take a seat. Come on in. Bum, bum, bum. Come on in, take a seat. Let's have some fun tonight. Hi, everybody. Hi. Long time no see. I knew. But I'm here. I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah, it's not this one. All right. Hi. Can everybody see okay? Let's make sure everybody can see. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah, I know y'all watching SWV. If it get boring, you can just dip on over here to me, okay? If it's boring. Okay. I, I'm just, it was like, I was watching it and I was just like, okay, gotta go. Thanks, bye. And I left, okay? <laughs> I was watching it and then I was like, I was like, okay, gotta go, buddy, thanks. This is great, gotta go. I know all those songs. I, I, matter of fact, it ain't but a couple of hits, okay? All right, let's make a cocktail before we start um, baking. I'm gonna do a shot of St. Germain, which is elderflower liqueur. Somebody said it was um, <laughs> elderberry. Man, elderberry, no, elderflower liqueur. Okay, I'm gonna do a shot of vodka. All right, this is absolute elixir. I'm gonna do a mango martini. So I got a little bit of mango nectar, mango syrup. So we put a little bit of that in there for mango. All right, I like my martinis to have a little bit of a well-rounded. So I do a little squeeze of fresh lemon juice. It don't matter who squoze it. And then for a little bit of sweetness, uh, uh oh. Okay. And then for a little bit of sweetness, we add a little uh, sucra drop to this. S U C R A, sucra drop. You get it off Amazon or something. That's where I got mine from. I don't know where you get yours from. But I, I reckon about Amazon, you'd be all right, okay? We put this in the cocktail shaker. And then we give a shake. And then let me grab some ice. I will grab a bit of ice, and then we can take our lovely mango martini and we'll pour it just like this. Okay, what we got? Mango martini, come on God. And we toast. Bow your head and say grace, grace. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's real good right there. Okay. We should make a cake. Oh, let me find my stuff. Y'all hold the line one second. The um the housekeeper the housekeeper came and cleaned up and I you know I got to find 
where she put everything. Hold on, y'all. Hold the line. I got it. I knew it wasn't too far away. Okay? I know it wasn't. It wasn't too far. It wasn't too far miss, missing. Okay? Come, we got to plug this up. All right, we're going to make. Um, hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I put the comments off on Instagram because you know Instagram don't know how to behave, child. And the trolls is over here. The foreigners, they want to learn how to make cakes too. Okay. Into a mixer, we take a sip. Okay, this is a mixer. This is a mango martini. You're so late. Getting home from the office. Did you miss your train? Were you caught in the rain? Oh, don't bother. All right. Into here, we are going to add room temperature butter. Okay, 100% room temperature. But hold on one second. You know they say it's a uh, butter shortage, a chicken shortage. So we can't be throwing nothing away. So we just gonna, I'm just gonna scrape the inside of this hemp, like this hemp. See that? That's a good two tablespoons, well, two teaspoons, okay? A butter. So I'm gonna scrape that real good. And then put this over here in the trash. Okay, now to that butter, um, I need to add some cream cheese. Only cream cheese they had down to the Publix was this plain um softened cream cheese. Listen, you know, sometimes in life. You have to do what you can. And sometimes in life, you have to substitute for what you can substitute for. Amen? And today, we shall be substituting a regular block of cream cheese for this delicious cream cheese spread. Because it's all going to work what? Yet the same. Okay? Get all of it out. All right? And then we're going to take... This other one, I don't need this other one actually. This one, all I need is just this here. See? Okay, and then we're gonna put some sugar in here. Now, I don't know, I see it right there. I'm gonna say, I don't even see my, my cup measure, but I see it right here. Y'all know, don't nothing be ready. Be all you know, sometimes they be have people be having stuff all laid out, little containers of this, little containers. Of, I don't have that. Mm -mm. I don't have that. Okay, one, two, and three cups of granulated sugar. Okay. All right, let's roll this together in the mixer, yes? Start it on low, because if you don't put it on low, you're gonna be wearing it. And that's not cute to walk around with cake batter upside your head like that. Okay, so start it on low. Let it get going real good. And then once it really start moving good, we're gonna pump up the, the uh pump up the the speed. Okay, y'all got that? I want you here. 
Can get to add a couple of eggs in here. See, you want it light and fluffy. The longer you do this, the better. So you can do this about three minutes. Okay? Longer you do it, the better. Okay. You want it to be light, like a pale color, like a light pale color. You see what I'm saying? Look at this. See, this is what happens when it's room temperature. See how light that is? And we got all that good air. I need a little salsa. Don't I? Let me go a little something right here. We got all that air mixed up in there real good, okay? That's what you want. Okay, you really want to make sure, be honest with you, you get you a bagel, toast it, with just what's in here. That's about all you need, bruh. Okay, all right, let's throw in a couple of eggs. Also, at room temperature, and you know we do them one at a time around here, okay? You can't be in a hurry. I mean, you could be, but your cake gonna be a fool. You see what I'm saying? So around here, you just go nice and slow. That's one egg. That's two eggs. This is the third, and the last egg is the fourth. Okay, just put them in one at a time. That way they get a chance to really, you know, hang out, incorporate real good. You know what I mean? Like that. Then that's looking real good. Now we didn't put no flavor in this just yet. Okay, none yet. So let's flavor this. A little bit while that's working out. I'm gonna grab the flavorings. Okay. The first flavor we're gonna put in is by way of lemon juice. I mean lemon zest. Okay, let me zest. Not juice. Zest, okay? All right. So I'm going to zest in. Let me do it in this bowl. That way y'all can really see it. I'm going to zest in the zest of two lemons, okay? This is called a microplane. Let me tell you something about this here, vodka. Let me tell you about vodka. See, the thing about vodka is the vodka be cutting clean across the yard on you. You see what I'm saying? Like, it don't take no time for that to show up. That is delicious. Okay. What are we doing? We zested the lemon. Okay, come on. Do the lemon zest in here. And I'm doing the zest of like two lemons. And I'm only going, I'm, I'm like zesting the lemon and I'm only giving you like the light parts, the skin, like just the skin. Don't go too far into the pith because that gets bitter, see? And you don't want that. And try to get it in the bowl, not on, not on the counter. <laughs> Try to get, listen, okay? Try to get it in the bowl. Huh? Okay. Wait a minute, I got a little bit on the counter. Hold on. Lemons cost two. They're not exempt. Everything is up because of the pandemic, okay? Look, see that? See what we got now? We have, you see that? We have, um, lemon zest, fresh grated lemon zest. Put that right in here. All of that going down. Okay, now, I don't like adding lemon juice 
because I feel like lemon juice will react too much with the baking powder and the cake don't rise properly. So I'm not going to be adding lemon juice. I'm going to add it in the glaze on top. See? But right now, I'm going to put lemon extract in here. Okay? Put you a dip of that extract in there like this. See? Okay, they go one dip. Whoop. One more dip. Whoop. Just like that. That's all you need. Okay? Don't go overboard now. Tastes like Pepto Bismol. Don't do that. Okay, and then what I like to do sometimes with my cake is I like to throw a little piece of uh, vanilla extract in there with that lemon. I feel like that vanilla extract is just can do no wrong. And in a cake like this, a good I got it all over the counter. Get it on the Get it in the bowl. Don't do what I just did. But I feel like a little lemon extract make the, I mean, vanilla extract make the world go round. Okay, I personally am a fan. Okay? Okay, so we put this back on and we mix this together now. See? Like that. That's looking good. Now let's get some dry ingredients. Let's get a little pinch of salt going on. Okay, a little pinch of kosher salt. Let me grab some, I got some baking powder over here. We're going to put a scotch of baking powder in here. Okay, a scotch is probably a good three quarters of a teaspoon. Okay, baking powder. Now we need to add the flour. We put in three cups of sugar. So we're going to add in three cups of all-purpose flour. And we're going to put it in one cup at a time. See? All right. I don't do all that sifting stuff. You could if you want to. Cut that down. You could sift if you want to. But I'm not a sifter. Okay, and I just don't believe in extra work and we don't need to do extra work, okay? All right, so that's two cups and you should start to hear the mixer struggle, okay? It's a pound cake, so that's typically what happens, okay? Let me see how I like this. Oh yeah, that look good. Okay, that looked really good. Okay, now let me tell you one of my little secrets. Okay, and don't be telling everybody our secret because you tell everybody our secret, they're gonna start doing it. Okay, don't do that. You hear how it's starting to struggle a little bit? It needs a little bit of moisture, so I'm gonna put one cup of heavy cream in here to keep it nice and moist, okay? One cup of heavy cream, here we go. Oh yes. Now let me get a cake pan, I don't even have a cake pan out. Let me see what I got. Hold the line, y'all. Y'all ain't going nowhere. You watching me, it's Saturday night. Okay. Okay, our cake batter is done. Okay. Let me get this out the way so y'all can see what's going on. Is it me? Or is the vodka sneaking up on me? How you doing? Great. Okay. Here we go. We can move this out the way. I can move this out the way. And I can move this and this out the way. 
wipe this up because cleanliness is next to godliness. And I got to get to heaven. And I am certainly enjoying the trip. This is Mary L. McCracken. Okay, here we go. We're going to do a little spray, spray, well, a lot of spray. This is a little Baker's Joy. It's got the flour and stuff already mixed in so your stuff don't stick. Spray it good. See that? Last thing you want is to go all this hard work on this cake and then it gets stuck. If it's up, then it's stuck. That's not what we want, okay? The Lord did not call us for a stuck cake, okay? All right, so this is, oh, it smells so good. Oh, Jesus Christ, it smells delicious. Y'all want to smell it? <laughs> smells good. All right, let's put the batter in. We'll divvy it up. Make sure we get it in there. Okay, it's a thick batter because it's what? A pound cake. Just exactly what you want to see. It's a cream cheese pound cake situation. I was, oh, I supposed to have put some um, sour cream in here. I forgot. Oh, well, next time. Next time, we put the sour cream in there. I forgot. Okay, and we're going to pray this cake be done by the time we're done cooking this food. If not, then just follow me on my Instagram stories because I'll, <laughs> I'll post a picture of it. Okay, if it's done. Okay, and then I don't know about your grandmama, but I believe one of the reasons the pound cake always came out good is because you got the you got to pat it on the counter to get rid of the air. Now, I don't really know if this works. Personally, I don't believe it does because the batter is so thick. But it's what she did, so I'm going to do it too. Just like that. Okay? Oven is preheated. This goes off into the oven. You see that? Beautiful. Okay? Into the oven it goes. Now, I doubt that cake is really going to be all the way ready for us by the time it's ready. But you know what? Listen. If it's ready, then it's going to be ready. Okay? And that's just that. All right. Let's do one more thing right quick. All right. One more thing real fast because we got to really do this. Okay. You get you a bowl, see? You get you a bowl, okay? And then in the bowl, in the bowl, you take a stick of butter, okay? And you put the butter room temperature in the bowl, see? Okay? Then, you sprinkle a little piece of salt on top of the butter. Trust me on this, okay? Just go with me. Just go with me, okay? Just go with me. Okay, then, to that, butter I'm going to add some sugar I know y'all like what in the hell I know just go with me okay then to that sugar I'm going to add a little bit of flour okay I may have to add some more butter because I didn't measure it out but we'll see, all right? I'm gonna get a glove. And let me get set up. All right, I got my pot. 
parchment paper right here or a seal pack and a, uh, you know, a little situation. Okay, seal pack and a sheet tray. Okay. You put on the glove. Yes. Okay, then we use the glove to mix the butter with the flour and the sugar and a little piece of salt. And if it's if I need to put a little more butter in here, I probably will. But I gotta smush it around. I'm gonna show you the consistency I'm going for. I only know how to do this by look. I don't really know how to do this by look and feel. Actually, I don't think I need any more butter. Mm, let me see. No, I think I'm good. So I think it was like a stick of butter, uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar, and about a cup of flour, and a good pinch of salt, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crumble this and put this on the sheet tray and then let it bake, okay? Let me show you what I mean. So you just crumble like this. And look how much that one stick of butter will make. It makes a lot. Okay? Spread it out good, like a nice even layer. And what do we have? We have butter cookie crumbles. Yeah. Look at that. We have butter cookie crumbles, okay, that we can put on top of the lemon pound cake when it comes out of the oven after we glaze it. Huh? Okay. Play with me. All right, put that in the oven. And we'll let that bake. Now, again, I am not terribly sure if all these things are going to be ready by the time it's time for us to eat, but you know what? Use your imagination. Okay? What a skate singing. What I need from you is understanding. Hi. Let me get some more ice. Hold on, y'all. Too much ice. Okay, we're gonna put one shot of um, Saint Germain, one ish shots of good vodka, a little bit of mango. Coach of Sucre. And a little scotch of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Don't even matter who squeezed it. Okay. Lid is on. <laughs> And we pour. Perfect. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me.
Okay. Now, let me do a few things over here. Hold on. There we go. Okay, hold on. She cleaned stuff and left it on the, on the thing. Okay. This is what we're going to do. Show you what's going to happen around here. Okay. We got work to do. Y'all ready? Let's go. Okay. This is a, it's, it's an indoor stove top smoker. Okay. You can get this from Amazon. Okay. Let me show you. Inside. We have wood chips, okay, that we put in here. There's a little plate that goes on top of that. And then we have a little rack that goes on top of that. And then you could actually smoke inside. Now, I wouldn't go crazy. Ribs and all that stuff, don't go crazy, okay? This is an indoor smoker. So we're going to do a quick smoke on... The most gorgeous tomatoes you have ever seen in your entire life, okay? Look at these. Do you see that? Let me give you a close-up because you I don't think you can really, really fully appreciate the beauty of these tomatoes until you see it close-up. You see that? Okay, do you see that? Gorgeous, beautiful tomato. These are sweet tomatoes. They're called sugar bottoms. And they're on the vine. So we're going to put our tomatoes right into the smoker. Yes. That's what we're doing. Okay. Then... We'll pop the lid back on because that'll keep all the smoke in. And we're going to smoke these for literally 60 seconds, 90 at the most, okay? Like, we're not going to cook these. We just want to infuse really amazing, fantastic tomato smoke. I mean, smoke in the tomatoes, okay? So we'll let this go for just a moment, okay? We should probably cut up our vegetables because I got a few vegetables that need to be cut up. Let me grab an onion. Hold the line, please. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. A red onion. Oh, let me cut the skin off first. Oh, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Okay. I want to slice these down, okay? I mean, you could chop them, and chopping would be, I think, would be okay. But I'm kind of going for a certain look on the presentation of the onion. So, you know, I'm going to do a slice instead of a, a chop. But you do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the shoulders, How, whatever the words are, I forgot the lyrics. Don't put me in that game show with, um, with, um, what's his name? 
Uh, oh, look, see? We got smoke. We got smoke. Look at that. See that? We have smoking. Okay. 15 more seconds and we're going to cut it off. Okay? Somebody count down. Start counting. All right, y'all counting? All right, heat comes off, all right? Again, all I wanna do is just put a little smoke. I don't want these smoked out, okay? That's not what we doing. We not doing, uh, <laughs> okay, indica and sativa. We just gonna do a little smoke action. That's all we need to do with that, okay? That's it. Okay, all right. Now, over here, I have onion and bell pepper. I got a green and a um, yellow, okay? Green and yellow, we're just gonna cut strips on some of this. Yes, as much as you like. It's an onion and a pepper. How bad could that be? Okay, let's cut this to match. Um, the same color, I mean the same size as our uh, onions, okay? Then, let's work on getting these into the saute. Did someone say saute? I didn't hear you very loudly. Did someone say saute? I thought that's what I heard. Yes, we're going to saute these vegetables in, guess what? My brand new Darius Cooks Everyday Skillet. Don't worry, it's not for sale yet because the second shipment ain't came in yet. It's not for sale yet, but it will be for sale soon, and you can get it by going to shopdariuscooks.com, okay? This everyday skillet could be yours, okay? At Shop Darius... Okay. Okay, I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm excited, okay? Let me cut the air up, too. I'm sweating profusely. It's very warm in here. Hold on, y'all. Okay. It's very warm. And I'm sweating. What y'all say, huh? What y'all say about the skillet, huh? <laughs> let me take, let me take y'all off punishment on um, Instagram. Turn on. What I need to do, I can't do Instagram. Let me see. I need to make my profile private to get rid of the bots. Let me see if I can do it on my iPad. I'm going to try. Okay, see if I can do it on this iPad. If I can do it, I'll do it. Child, it need a password. I don't even know the password. It's a incorrect. Sorry, it's the bots in here. Let me see. I don't know it, y'all. I forgot my password. I'm sorry. Let me see if I remember it.
Oh, I think I know it. Mm -mm, that's not it. <laughs> Ooh, that's not it. This ain't it either. Let me try one more time. If not, then oh well, I can't, I don't remember it. Sorry, I don't remember the password. Y'all was on timeout because of the bots. I got to put my profile on private to keep the bots out, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, let's walk through my new Darius Cooks everyday skillet, okay? First of all, it's massive so that you can saute and cook for the entire family, okay? Not only that, but it has what's called hex clad technology, which means that it's non-stick. You can use wooden spoon or you could use um, stainless steel. It won't scratch, it won't damage. And on the back, do you see the Darius Cooks logo? Huh? Do you see the Darius Cooks logo on the back of this? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so excited. I'm going to rinse it out. Okay. Nothing will stick in this pan. Okay. Trust me. Okay. So we get a little heat on the pan. Meanwhile, Let's get those tomatoes out of the smoke. Okay, they they smoke plenty. They smoke plenty. Okay, and be careful. This is hot. See, they smoke plenty. Look at that. Okay, they're dripping with a little moisture. That's perfect. A couple of them split open a little bit from the heat. That's beautiful. We have beautiful smoked tomatoes. And we call these cold smoked because we don't let them heat all the way through. Okay. And you can smoke anything. You can smoke chocolate. Uh, you can smoke salt. I mean, literally, you could smoke whatever you like. But this is beautiful. Mmm. And they have a little smokiness to them, okay? So those are going to be perfect for our sauce. Speaking of the sauce, let's work on it, okay? So I'm going to start by adding in some olive oil to the bottom of my everyday skillet. And then I'm going to put in the onion and the bell pepper right in here to start cooking up, breaking down and getting really nice, okay? Meanwhile, I got a little sauce pot and I'm gonna add some water and get it to a boil for our grits, okay? And one of the things I like to do is make instant chicken stock. So I've got a little bit of chicken bouillon. And I'm going to add some chicken bouillon, about a tablespoon, right into the boiling water. Okay? Meanwhile, this is looking good. Let's put a little bit of salt and pepper on this on these onions and peppers. Do you see this? Look at how well this cooks. Look at how well my everyday skillet 
cooks up these but can you see this can you see this okay okay I just want you to see what's happening okay with this everyday skillet you will completely improve your cooking game your saute game with my everyday skillet okay pinch of salt and pinch of pepper goes in there and then we're gonna grab some garlic I have some already chopped so I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic chopped garlic right into here okay this is fresh garlic that I already have chopped up that we're gonna add right to those onions and peppers okay and let that saute really nicely and beautifully okay now let's talk fish okay because I have some I don't know what kind of fish you like I'm a Chicago dude so I like I love catfish but they have salmon so I picked some salmon up from the supermarket I did it Instacart did okay beautiful pieces of salmon you see that okay lovely lovely now I just want to cut it down a little bit because these are like super huge slices okay so I just want to take these slices and cut them into about thirds all right so there we go so there's three and this gives us four I'm really gonna stop at five pieces because I don't need more than that okay so I got four pieces I'm gonna take the rest of this and since I'm going out of town tomorrow, I'm going to freeze the rest of this. Okay. But we definitely need to wash this off and season this really nicely, okay? Let's check on our our vegetable. Oh yes. Oh yes. And the great thing is see, you don't even need that much oil in here for these. This is great. Let's add in the tomatoes. So we did those smoked tomatoes. Let's before we wash this off, let's put those smoked tomatoes in there as well. So I'm just gonna pull them off of the vine and you don't have to use these cherry ones if you don't want to you could use like these are super sweet but if you don't want to use these you could use like regular like Roma tomatoes and you can smoke the whole tomato you could they're delicious this way and you just don't want to over smoke them so you want to be careful to make sure you get them at you know a few minutes in And then we'll pull off the vines. All right, and then we have smoked tomatoes. And the great thing about uh, these smoked tomatoes is that you could do them like this or wherever you normally like a tomato. On a salad is great, right? 
uh, on a sandwich is great, and pasta sauce is amazing. But let me tell you what'll really get them. What'll really get them is a charcuterie board with the smoked tomatoes on the board. Done. Done. Okay? Done. You understand me? And look at this. Look at what we have going on in this pan. Look at this beautiful melange of flavor, okay? All right, and it's just a little salt and pepper. We're gonna add some more seasoning in a little bit. But let those tomatoes hang out and do their thing. Okay, we have our fish, salmon, okay? Let's rinse it off. Real good. All right, and then let's talk about some seasoning for the fish. Let me grab some seasoning, y'all, hold on. Hold the line, I'm coming. Some of this, some of this, some of this, some of this, and some of this. All right. Okay. Fish is in. Give a little salt. And pepper. Oh, you know what's happening behind me? It's, hold on, we got a little boiling chicken stock happening. You know what's gonna happen. Quit playing with me, like y'all don't know. Play on me like y'all don't know what's finna happen. Okay, we boiling chicken stock. We're gonna put some grits in here, okay? We boiling chicken stock because we're gonna put a few pieces of grits in the stock. Okay, that's what we're doing. There we go. Okay, I got, I got some, uh, some grits. Yes, we making a little fish and grits. That's all we making. It ain't nothing too bad, huh? That's it. A little fish and grits, huh? You know, a little something. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that sauce with those smoked, get in there, with those smoked tomatoes. Look at that, just beautiful. Okay, what we was doing? Seasoning the fish, salt and pepper. A little crushed red for some personality. A little seafood seasoning from Badia. It's like an Old Bay situation, okay? A little bit of coriander, okay? Which is the seed of cilantro, which is delicious. A little bit of herbs de Provence. You know, we love that. And then we have to have our old favorites, a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder. Okay. That's all we need. I'm gonna take a little bit of that um, heavy cream that I have, <laughs> and I'm gonna use that as my buttermilk. Okay, and we'll let this sort of hang out. Let me check on these grits. Give me one second. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna cut my grits down to low.
All right, let's talk about this sauce, because this sauce needs a little bit of attention at this point. Um, I need some liquor. Okay, I need some liquor. All right, Tennessee White to deglaze the pan. Okay, a little Hennessy white to deglaze the pan. All right, that's what we're doing. We're deglazing the pan with the Hennessy white. Okay, very simple stuff here. All right, we're cooking. Yes. Now let's get some chicken stock in there by adding in some water and then a little bit of chicken bouillon. Where I, where I put it? Oh, right here. All right, chicken bouillon. Okay, let's talk about these grits for one second. Okay, because now these grits are crying out for attention. Okay, now we're gonna put these grits in here and they thick as shit, okay? Saying, hey, uh, come see about me, please. And I'm saying, don't you worry, pot of grits, daddy got you. Okay, first thing we're gonna put in to our thickened grits is a little piece of butter. Because I'll be honest with you, I never met grits that couldn't use a little piece of butter. Okay? So, chicken stock, it cooks in. Butter, it cooks in a little bit more. Okay? It's begging for moisture. So, let's give it, let's moisturize our grits. Let's give this the spa treatment it deserves. Okay? Also, to our thickened grits is some mascarpone cheese. Okay, mascarpone cheese is like a, it's an Italian cream cheese. Slightly sweeter, slightly thinner than regular cream cheese. But this is our creamy grit insurance policy, okay? And this is looking good already. But we're going to help it out even more by adding in a little bit of heavy cream. Okay? So these grits have butter. Yes. Oh, I made a mess. They have butter. They have, um, I'm making a bigger mess. Jesus Christ. They have butter. They have heavy cream. Okay, so all the heavy cream I just put in, I basically just spilled on my board. Okay? So I'm going to add some more. <laughs> heavy cream <laughs> and put this on low all right and then get my board cleaned up because i just made a whole mess on the board with cream okay speaking of cream for the sauce all right you want to reduce the stock and let the alcohol whatever you're using so normally I would use like a white wine product, like a white wine, like a Chardonnay or um, a Chenin Blanc or something like that. But this all I got was, was white Hennessy. So we added the white Hennessy, okay? To this, I'm gonna douse this with some cream and then I can add my seasonings, which are really just a mimic of what we put on the fish. So I've got some Herbes de Provence in here. I've got some garlic powder in here. I've got some onion powder in here. And I've got a little pinch of red pepper flake for just, just like, I like to call it for like personality, if you will. You know what I mean? Something that just says, hey, how you doing? I'm here, okay? 
So this is it. This is the sauce. And we'll thicken this if we need to. Um, this has smoked tomatoes, Hennessy. It's got sauteed onion, bell pepper, garlic. Uh, to that, we have the heavy cream situation happening. All good things are going on in that pot, okay? And with a careful turn of my spoon in this little bitty ass pot that I picked up, I'm just gonna work out our grits a little bit, see? Now, they were very thick and not as creamy, but now you can see they're perfect, okay? So we'll keep these warm behind us, yes? Are we cooking or are we cooking? I can't hear you. What you said? Exactly. All right. Now, we need to fry our fish. Thank you. And yes, I'm getting high off my own supply. <laughs> yes, I am getting high off my own supply. Okay, this is the Darius Cook's Everyday Skillet with the hex clad technology. Do you see this? <laughs> with the Darius Cooks logo on the back. Play with me. Don't do that, okay? I'm not for play play. Okay? Now, I'm going to keep this sauce on low. And I'm going to get this skillet warm. Can you see this? Look at this sauce boiling. Hold on. You got to get, get a hold of this sauce. Look at this sauce. You, can you see that? Look at that pan real fast. Look at that pan real fast. You see that? Now, the everyday skillet is not on sale yet. It's not on sale yet, so you can't buy it. But it will be on sale soon. And I know your question is, Darius, how much is it going to cost? And my answer to you is, the hell if I know. Let me see. It'll probably be somewhere north of $89 somewhere south of like $119, okay? Other folks sell similar everyday skillets for like $150. So I'm going somewhere between $89 and somewhere between like a $119 situation, okay? Between you, me, and the gate post, okay? Somewhere around there. Okay? 89, 99, somewhere around there. Okay? Before I dredge my fish real fast, hold on one second. My butter cookie crumbles, okay? You see that? My butter cookie crumbles are coming out of the oven to cool, okay? Now, my pound cake is still in the oven. We're going to pray that it make it. I don't know if it's going to make it. So, we're going to be in prayer, all right? Okay, a little bit of oil in my everyday skillet. Because we're going to do a little quick uh, fry on, um, on the fish, okay? Now, let's make the dredge for the fish. To do that, I've got some flour. And I'm going to add a little bit of cornmeal into my flour, okay? Now, if you are watching and you're not familiar with black culture, 
Let me hip you to game real fast, okay? Now, I just used a neutral oil that was a corn oil, okay? Typically, I typically buy whatever is on sale, okay? So the corn oil must have been on sale. That's why I bought it. The grease we finna use can be reused, okay? But since we frying fish in that oil, that's gonna be fish grease from now on, okay? You don't make nothing in that grease but fried fish and salmon croquette, that's it. You can't make nothing else with that fish, I mean with that grease, okay? Now, if I was frying chicken, the chicken grease can be used for anything. Saute, frying chicken, frying pork chops, whatever you want to use it for, okay? Now, there is a little rule you need to understand. There's an exception. The exception is that the uh, chicken grease can be used to fry fish. But once you use the chicken grease to fry fish, it becomes... Huh? Okay. All right. It becomes what? Fish grease. And once it becomes fish grease, fish grease rules start to apply. Okay? All right. Now, I put cornmeal flour and a little bit of seafood seasoning in there. I'm going to pop in my marinated seasoned fish. Okay, I'm making it a little like a fish fry almost, okay? And I'm going to pop this in there and then mix this up real good. Sometimes I use all flour. Sometimes I use flour and cornmeal. It just depends on how I feel on a particular day. You know what I mean? Some days I feel like all flour. Some days I feel like all cornmeal. And some days I feel like mixing it together, okay? So, yes, I'm going to fry up the salmon. All right, I'm going to give my hands a quick wash. Hold the line, please. Ain't nothing worse than, uh, you know, than this. All right, and I'm gonna clean this up, and then we're gonna look at our sauce. We're gonna taste the sauce because the sauce might need a little salt. It might need a little pepper. I don't really know what it needs, so I'm gonna go and taste it just to see real fast because it's been cooking and it's been reducing. This is that smoked tomato and Hennessy cream. All right. Oh my God. Smoked tomato, oh, and Hennessy cream sauce. Let me see. Oh, that fish smells good. I smell you back there. You're smelling good. Let me stir these grits. Hold on, y'all. Oh, yeah. All right, we good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, my pound cake ain't done. It's cooking, but it ain't done. Okay, let me see if I need to add something to this. See how thick it I got? Look at that thickness on there. That thing is thicker than a snicker, baby. Let me see. <laughs> that don't need nothing. Okay? That needs zero. Oh, that's good. I get that smokiness from the tomatoes, but it's so mellow with the onion and bell pepper that's done sauteed out real good. Oh, that is, that is bananas. That's really, really good. Okay, now that's good. Let me get um, a plate for my fish, y'all. Hold on. We don't want to overcook that. Ain't nothing worse than some overcooked fish. 
All right, let me flip it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That looks great. Now we're doing all this in my everyday skillet, okay? My Darius Cooks everyday skillet. I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, I'm gonna show you the pound cake, but it's not all the way ready yet. You see the pound cake? It's not all the way ready yet. It's still jiggling, and that's hot. Okay, so that's not gonna be ready by the time it's time for us to be done. I was hoping it would be, but that's what happens when you cook your real food. You have to use your imagination. You feel me? You use your imagination, then you know, hey, it is what it is, all right? Before I pull my fish out, let me get these scallions cut. Okay. Okay, I got scallions cut. My fish is done. Let me pull my fish out. Fish is nicely fried, ready to go. Okay. I have scallions cut, ready to go. So since I since my pound cake is not gonna be ready yet, I can at least explain to you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take some um, powdered sugar and lemon juice and make a glaze, and then put the glaze on top of that and then take some of the cookie crumbles, right? These delicious cookie crumbles that we made, these amazing butter cookie crumbles. Oh, it's so good, y'all. Look at that. See that? Mm, it's so good. You take these butter cookie crumbles and you crumble on top of the cake. So you get a little bit of a crunch with the pound cake. Oh, it's so good. Oh, delicious. And the salt, the salt, oh, it's so great there. All right. Let's put it together. Look at that. Creamy grits on the bottom. It's just fish and grits, that's it. Okay, that's it. Fish and grits with mascarpone grits on the bottom. Okay, see, these are grits, very, very nice. We're gonna put our fish right on top, see? Like that, yes? Yes, okay. Then, let me get my stainless steel. Um, ladle, okay? Then we're gonna take some of this sauce with the Hennessy, and the smoked tomatoes and we will drizzle that right over on top okay this has the onion and the bell pepper Ugh. and the garlic okay then i'm going to take 
my scallions and sprinkle those all over on top like that. And then for a little bit of je ne sais quoi, I'm gonna take some seafood seasoning, non-salted of course, and sprinkle that all over. Okay, now, what were you saying? I didn't hear you. I'll show you what we have, okay? We have a lovely plate of fish and grits with smoked tomatoes and Hennessy all strewn about the sauce. Okay, as you can see. Now, how good does that look? We made this on the live, okay? Using my Darius Cooks Everyday Skillet, which I'm going to be featuring for you soon and using it in lots of delicious recipes, okay? So I have lots of good things coming. Just stay tuned. All right. Now, bow your head so we can say grace. Grace. Okay. I'm going to try the grits with the sauce first. Okay. The grits with the sauce. Just because I want to see. Child, listen. Baby, 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 listen. If this thing ain't amazing, I don't know what it is. Okay? These grits are cooked perfectly. They're creamy and thick. Look at this. Look at this bite. I'm gonna go camera to camera. I'm gonna go camera to camera so y'all can see. Oh, oh, I'm making a mess. Okay, I'm gonna go camera to camera. Okay, so you can see. Why do this taste like this? I don't know. Why do this taste like this? I sure wish that cake was ready so I can show you that cake. Let me see. It ain't ready yet, but this is. All right, well, stay tuned to my Instagram stories. I'll post a picture of the cake on Instagram stories when it's done. Listen, I'm going to go eat this. Two things I want to tell you, as I always do. Food in my life, life is my food. Until next time, I want to wish you a happy cooking from my heart. To yours. Bye, y'all. Mm, that's good. This is here. Amazing. You hear me? Downright amazing.